Hey everybody, this is Indie Geek, and today I'm taking a look at Transistor. I know this has been kind of a long time coming. Uh, if you've been around my channel a lot, you know that I've talked a lot about Bastion, and I've actually talked a lot about looking forward to Transistor. Um, unfortunately, there were some kind of audio issues that I was getting that um, other people have been getting as well that were kind of preventing this video from happening. But uh, it seems like most of that is fixed. So uh, I do apologize if there are any weird audio issues that happen, but with that, uh, let's move on to my thoughts about Transistor. So Transistor is the uh, new game from Supergiant Games, who of course uh, made Bastion. And this, um, in a lot of ways, it almost feels like a sequel to Bastion. I, I will say right now that it is uh, $20, so a little bit more expensive than Bastion was. Uh, it's only available on Windows, at least for right now. So I am going to turn the volume down just a little bit more. Uh, and I am mostly going to just talk over the narration and stuff like that. Uh, if you played Bastion, you are pretty much going to understand what's going on in Transistor without really needing any explanation at all, with the exception of the combat that we're about to see. So, uh, this is the turn function, and everything in this game is kind of like computer-oriented, kind of cyberpunk style, so uh, all of our moves are written out as functions, so you can see like breach, uh, open parenthesis, close parenthesis there, that is actually a programming kind of uh, standard there for a lot of programming languages, so... Uh, Basically, you can think of that as a function, and that is basically what's going to be going on with all of this. So when the time freezes like that, that is our turn function. Basically, what's happening is we get to freeze it and plan out our attacks. Um, so, you know, it's, it's still kind of similar in gameplay style to Bastion in that it is still kind of an action RPG. But the way the game plays out... Uh, it's much more strategic, I feel, than Bastion was, because Bastion was more of kind of a, a kind of a beat 'em up, kind of a hack and slash kind of thing. This is more of you are going to get to pick out your moves, and you get four moves at any one time, and then you're going to plan out the best way to use those moves in every battle. And I think that that's really cool. At some points, uh, some points it does get to be maybe a little much. And I will kind of talk more on that as we move on. Uh, so here's one of the cool things about Breach. Is that we can hit multiple enemies, so certain moves will go through enemies. Then basically, so you see those cells get dropped. Uh, if we don't pick up the cell fast enough, then we end up having that enemy respawn. And that's kind of your your sort of secondary objective, I guess, in battles. So first you want to kill the enemy, and then you want to uh, pick the cells up so that they don't respawn. So we just got a um, we got a new power. Uh, and actually, this is going to be a good battle to talk about what I was talking about a second ago, some of the downsides of the turn function. Um, so these are OVC terminal, uh, terminals, which are kind of used to sort of kind of add things to the game, sort of let you know what's kind of going on in the setting around you. So basically we've got this kind of choice per se. It's not much of a choice uh, for how you want the weather. So, um, you know, as we can see, we're in kind of this like cyberpunk futuristic uh, environment. It reminds me a lot of like Blade Runner. So anyways, um, this, this battle was the one I was talking about. So you get to battles like that, and sure, I could have used the turn function, but it was so much easier for that battle to just kind of not use the turn function and then just play it like I would play Bastion, I guess. Um, and, you know, it gets to the point later in the game where I wish maybe more battles you could do that, and I don't... You know, that's obviously not like the goal because a lot of time was put into making kind of the turn function work and make that be a focal point of the battle system. That being said, uh, it does get to the point, after, you know, around the end of the game where I'm, I'm ready to 
maybe not have to plan out every move, but you are put at a huge disadvantage if you don't plan out every move, especially when you get to battles like this. Um, as you see here, I uh, actually think I'll use Breach. Um, by backstabbing, we're going to do more damage, and that is the reason that I didn't plan more moves, because I know how this enemy works. So, part of it is also that you are going to learn how enemies work as you play. Um, and yes, this enemy drops a whole bunch of cells, so you typically end up fighting some more of those little guys. But yeah, it, it definitely, like, the combat feels very much like Bastion. Uh, and that, you know, we're going to have lots of different enemies. Enemies are going to have different sort of... Um, different sort of strategies that we have to use, basically. <clears throat> and then, um, as far as, like, using turn outside of battle, I think that's kind of the only time that I can remember. Um, we're picking up another function here. Most of our functions come from picking them up off of dead kind of residence that we find. So this is Jaunt. Jaunt lets us move really fast. Uh, it's okay. Uh, I actually use Jaunt as like a secondary function and I can explain that a little bit at this access terminal once we get there. So, um, actually I'm going to save this until I'm a little closer because then I'm going to come behind and I am going to do that, I think. Yeah, that was pretty good. And as you can see, the bar at the top, uh, it's gone now, but actually, let's do this instead. Um, so you'll see it here in a second. We do have, like, a limited use. Like, we can't just immediately jump back in and use the turn again. Uh, we have to allow it to kind of refresh. So that's how they keep it balanced. All right. So, um, right, and here's the other way that you gain functions, and this is by leveling up. So, when we level up, we get to choose certain things, certain upgrades for us. So, there I got a choice between a couple of functions. So, here's what's going to happen with this stuff. Basically, so on the left, you see our memory. Uh, each of these, as you can see, takes a certain number of bars of memory. So, this takes two, three, all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add bounce to the spark. So you can add things as like a secondary objective. And then the other thing that you can do is um, you can eventually get passive upgrades, which is also really cool. Uh, so I'm going to do that, I think, because I like that better as a secondary rather than using it as an actual function. So, that's that's kind of that system. Uh, there is like a ton of customization that you can do because there's a lot of different functions. Um, this is a process. All of the enemies are, are referred to as, as processes. So, we will see lots of that. Um, like I said, it, there's definitely a lot of like, oh, that did not even get him. There we go. Oh, I gotcha. Alright, and then I think I'm gonna do that. So you can also use movement as part of your planning, which is um, actually a really good idea to make sure that you are relatively safe at the end of your turn because you don't get... Um, you know, you don't get to attack again for a while. And it's not like that I could just go ahead and start attacking now. Um, if you've got your turn bar refreshing, you can't attack at all in any capacity. So you can't use turn. You also can't just use your functions to attack. So, again, they do um, a pretty good job of keeping it balanced in that respect. Uh, and I will say now... Sorry to bring this up out of nowhere. This might go a little long-ish because... Um, like I said before, I was a huge fan of Bastion. I, I have a lot of thoughts on the game, so uh, this may go a little bit longer than kind of a normal let's look at. And I should also say right here, I am planning on let's playing this, assuming that I can continue to not have 
issues making it work. So I would, um, I guess, look forward to that on the channel. All right. So that should finish it up there. So I mean, this is like this is the combat. This is what it's going to be. Uh, it doesn't really change from this point, other than the fact that you get to customize which functions you use and which functions you use as kind of um, secondary to the four main functions that are your attacks. So that is um, kind of the gameplay there. Other parts of the gameplay, uh, you don't really die, which is kind of an interesting thing. So if you run out of health, basically what happens is one of your functions gets overloaded, which means you can't use it again until until you reach a certain number of those access points, which are kind of the save points, as well as letting you customize your loadout, if you will. Um, so, you know, that's kind of your your issue with running out of health, is that you don't want to run out of functions, because if you do that too many times, then you're not going to have any functions at all. And obviously that would be um, a bad thing to have happen, so. Uh, hopefully the video is doing all right here. It looks like it might be stuttering a little. <clears throat> we'll see. Um, yeah, hopefully it turned out all right. Um, the other thing is that, yeah, so I mentioned passive abilities. That comes later. Uh, there's also limiters, which are similar to Bastion, where they may have, like, something good that happens but they typical typically also come with some kind of disadvantage so that will also be something that could potentially like oh yeah they're protected right now um, could lengthen the game if you are into that kind of thing I personally did not do like any of the extra stuff in the game really I pretty much just stuck with um, just the main story. It took me maybe three hours. Of course, I was playing it very strangely because I was dealing with audio issues after I would play for a minute or two. So, um, what happened was I kind of slowly made my way through the game. But that being said, it is a very good game. Um, and I know you were probably here for my actual thoughts on everything. Sorry to kind of dragged on here about all the different kind of systems in the game. But I think that kind of covers all of the the big things in the game. Yeah, we're definitely getting a little bit of slowdown there as well. Hopefully it's not affecting my audio. Um, again, you can do little things there. I only came over here because I knew this would uh, introduce us to another enemy, which are these weird weed things, um, which have a couple of different like uses so not only do they hurt you of course if you come into close proximity but they also will heal other enemies which obviously is not a good thing if you're planning on taking out the enemies so um, yep nothing new so nothing to change out there yeah so like I said uh, I think it took me about three hours or so um, so, you know, it's it's not the longest game, but I feel like it doesn't overstay its welcome. Um, right? That's a new thing. Uh, it's a protection thing, which we will... Oh, no, he's using the weed. Never mind. That's a different enemy that comes later. Um, yeah, so how do I feel about Transistor? Um, overall, I think it's good. What I don't like is that it is very, very, very similar to Bastion. Um, you know what, I know that's not maybe like the most fair thing to say because yeah, Supergiant Games made Bastion, but you know, it's it's music by Darren Korb, and I, you know, I love Darren Korb, I love his music, uh, it's an action RPG again, it has Ashley Barrett doing, doing singing, it's got Logan Cunningham kind of narrating the game, it feels very, very similar to Bastion, and in some ways I think that works as kind of a disadvantage to the game because the the main kind of overall thought that I kept getting throughout the game was well it's not as good as Bastion because when
when Bastion came out, Bastion was fresh, Bastion was new. Nothing else had really done that formula before. This, however, has been done before because we've all played Bastion, so we know this formula, you know, we know this kind of all of these ingredients that make up kind of the, the Bastion formula. And I guess that kind of what, what I was thinking the whole time was, is Supergiant Games going to make, like, keep making games like Bastion forever? Because as much as I loved Bastion, I also want to see kind of new things get done, especially because I, I love all of the people that are working on the game. I love all the, you know, the voice actors, the music composer, all of that stuff. But I don't want to keep replaying something that feels so much like Bastion, I guess, is where I'm at with this. And um, I guess, like, the, the problem is, is it really feels like a sequel to Bastion, but it's not supposed to be, as far as I'm aware. So, I guess I would say that in some ways that was kind of a letdown to me, because while it is a very, very good game, I don't think it's as good as Bastion, simply because, like I said, uh, I've experienced Bastion, so I, I kind of knew this formula already. This isn't new, and that's, I guess, where the issue for me comes in. Um, I don't know how most people feel about this. I've generally stayed away from reviews, things like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, that that's kind of where I'm at as far as how I feel about the game. Uh, you know, that being said, like I said, I do think it is very well done. I think it's a very good game, a very fun game. Um, it's just also, like I said, it's it's very, very, very similar to Bastion. So, I mean, if you, like, if you didn't like Bastion, you probably will not like Transistor. That being said, if you did like Bastion, I think it would be safe to pick up Transistor uh, and, and give it a play. Um, I guess I would just kind of say, be prepared to play something very, very similar to Bastion. Because that is, in general, what this is. It does feel similar to Bastion. The only real kind of difference is the kind of more strategic nature of the combat. Um, I don't know if this is a problem that other people have felt. To me, it was kind of a problem. I'm not sure why that just totally missed, but it's fine. Alright, let's go ahead and take... Oh. Let's go like this. Um, and you know, I, I should say, like, you know, even though I'm saying, yeah, it's very similar to Bastion, that being said, Bastion was incredible, and the fact that they are using the same formula here pretty much guaranteed that this game is going to be good. And I can tell you that, uh, from a musical standpoint, the music is very, very good. Maybe not quite as memorable as Bastion, but that's fine. Um, the voice acting, of course, is very, very good. And, you know, the game plays great. It's it's fun to play. It uh, You know, it never really got too frustrating. It is also similar to Bastion in that it is um, a pretty, like, easy experience, I guess, all the way through. But that's not a bad thing at all. Um, so, you know, I guess, I guess, like, my overall kind of prevailing thoughts when I finished were I really, really liked it, but not as much as Bastion. And I guess... Um, you know, it's going to be up to you to decide if that is a good thing or a bad thing, and if that's something that you care about at all. Because I know plenty of people were saying that they loved Bastion and, and loved this as well. I know plenty of people were saying that they didn't like Bastion and loved Transistor. So, um, again, I, I didn't see like how, it, how it's played out critically. Um, but this has been my time just like reading the Steam user forums and seeing what people felt there. Uh, and in general, people seem to have really, really liked Transistor. And like I said, I, I really like it as well. It just maybe failed for me a little bit in the fact that, um, one, like I mentioned earlier, the combat does tend to get a little lengthy, especially late in the game. After you've done it a million times, you tend to not really care so much to do the whole turn thing. And uh, the other thing, of course, being that it is very, very similar to Bastion. But if that doesn't bother you, uh, like I said, I think this is a pretty easy recommendation. It is, um, 
you know, whether those things bother you or not, it is still one of the best games released so far in 2014. Um, it is also on PS4 if you prefer that, but I'm playing on PC with an Xbox controller and it feels great. I'm sure keyboard and mouse controllers feel great as well. Um, but yeah, I think that is probably all I've got to say. Oh, I guess I should say the other thing that kind of bothered me was the story. Um, I don't know if maybe I'm just not, like, smart enough to figure out what's going on, but the story was kind of confusing to me, and just didn't seem all that kind of compelling, I guess, throughout the game. But, um, again, that's going to be more of a, of a personal issue for me than probably anything else about the game. Um, so, you know, again, like, I guess just another thing to keep in mind. Uh, story may not be for everyone in this one. But uh, that, will, that will be where I leave this off um, for today, yeah. So, like I said, if you want to see more of my thoughts on Transistor or more of me just kind of playing the game for fun, uh, I am planning on doing a Let's Play, assuming that it keeps working all right. So you can look forward to that. But uh, other than that, that will be it for my thoughts today. So, as always, feel free to leave comments. Uh, if you really have anything to say about it, let me know. Um, subscribe, of course, if you want to see more videos every single day. And if you liked my uh, thoughts on Bastion, or, <laughs> sorry about that, uh, my thoughts on Transistor, then please do consider um, clicking the like button. So, with that, I will uh, leave you for today. Thank you, of course, as always, for watching, and I will see you next time.